share with us your Holy Spirit and your comfort and your guidance. And we ask you, Lord, to enter into each one of us. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. We ask that you work with us and you guide us. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for all of the gifts that you've given us repeatedly, whether we deserve them or not. And we thank you in all things. So dear Lord, please be with us today. Please watch over each and every one of us. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And join me in the call to worship. Dear Lord, as we gather here in your house, we praise your holy name. We shout your greatness. Holy is our God. Praise his great name. You answer our prayers. Your Son redeemed us from our sins, and your Holy Spirit comforts <coughs> us. As we prepare for his sacrifice and the fulfillment of your covenant, we shout hallelujah. We lay down palms in your holy city to prepare for Christ's coming, and we sing hymns for your pleasure. We thank you for remembering us. As we also prepare for Christ's second coming, we watch carefully for false prophets and promises that do not fulfill your godly plan. We listen to your word and try to grow us as you call us. We look for your guidance and pray unceasingly. Holy is our God. Praise his great name. Amen. Our first song today is To God Be the Glory. Hymn number 66. <laughs> Oh, 
spirit, for your love, encouragement, faith, and healing. Yes, we ask that you watch over Amanda, Jimmy, Kathy, Emmy, Ethan, Tim, and Tom. We know that you've been with Sherry in her time of need. Please continue to lift her up and guide her and bring her peace and comfort. The Gonzalez family, Diane, Mikey, and Modesta, whose spirit is flailing at this time, Lord, bring her your comfort through the Holy Spirit and lift her. Abby, Lewis, Edie, and Tom, for healing and strength in your word, Lord. Hilda needs an apartment, Lord, so guide her in the direction, help someone to help her find her way, and give her what she needs. Ray, Bill, George, and John. Yes. Carol, Sam and Natalia, Samantha, and Xavier, who is in remission, and who needs to remain in remission, Lord, we know that your hand will guide him and watch over him and keep him healed, Lord. Eric and Carissa both need encouragement, Lord. Sammy, Jimmy, AJ, George, and Linda. Again, Lord, be with them. Guide them with your hand. Keep them under your wing of protection. Jerry and Donna, Judy, Mickey, Jeannie, and Amanda. Also Carrie, Ernie, Ray, and Pam. They also need your loving strength, Lord. They need to know that you are with them in their time of neediness and trouble and that you will guide them and watch over them. Please bring Katie and Kevin to your love. Christopher and his family give him strength as he endures his new job and guide him in it. Heather, the Nashville families who've been struck by tragedy, they need your guiding love, Lord. They need you to be with them to comfort them and their families. S and Dottie, the Haddens and the Bentons, give them strength, Lord. Give them healing. Give them guidance to know the right things to do for the ones that they love. John and Dana and Peter. Bob, Ginny, Jermaine, and Greg. Lord, guide all of these names. Guide all of these souls. Guide all of these people, Lord. Jim and Michael. Michael has some long-term effects from an illness. And he really needs healing, Lord. He's been suffering for 10 months and really needs to feel his strength come back. So in the name of Jesus, Lord, please heal him. Kyla, Carol, and the boys, they'll be traveling, so watch over them as they travel. Keep them safe. Greg, Julie, Luke, Grace, Maeve, and Jane. Lord, watch over the Pettibon family. Give them the strength that they need and the loving grace that you have for them. Greg needs healing, Lord. Heal him in his heart and in his mind and in his soul. Nancy and Elaine and Michael, Lord, be with them. Guide them. Hold them. Put your 
grace around them as a hedge to keep them safe and well. Dale, Cole, Greg, and Kevin, Ethan, Richard, and Lester. Lord, watch over them. Give them your strength. Give them your guidance. Anne, who's grieving at this time, Lord, comfort her. Be with her. Help her to see forward, to see that your plan is good and gracious. Kathy, Diane, Donna, Brenda, and Hank, please be with all of them, Lord. Let their sisterly love guide them and hold them together. Mary, Craig, Bruce, whose 85th birthday is today, guide him and be with him. Emily, Ryan, and Diana, whose love for Mia is not unknown. Megan and her family, Heather and Allie, they need strength and comfort. Brielle and Nancy, Lord, watch over all of these names as we love them and send our love out to them as we ask you for their healing, their guidance, their comfort, their spirit to be strengthened, Lord. Please watch over each and every one of them. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> verse 24, and John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. And from John, if you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. In the name of the Father, amen. 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 It's Palm Sunday, and I would love it if you would join me on this uh, sermonic song. It's found on page 174. You know it well, so let's sing praises to the Lord. <laughs> Children sing through pillar courts. 
Chapel located at 381 South Main Street, where faith in Jesus Christ is our foundation. God bless you this morning. Our sermon this morning is, you guessed it, He Rewards the Heart, Part 7. That's right, I said Part 7. Of those who love Him. He rewards the hearts of those who love Him. But I probably should have entitled this, He Rewards the Heart of Those Who Love Him Through His Son, Jesus Christ. This is our seventh week installment in which the Holy Spirit is teaching us concerning how God rewards our hearts for the spiritual things that we do. Each week, if you've been following along, we've been walking through Matthew chapter 6, which is a portion of the elements that Jesus taught to the disciples during the Sermon on the Mount, which is Matthew 5, Matthew 6, and Matthew 7. Throughout this journey, you've noticed, I hope, the pattern of Jesus making distinctions, contrasts, if you will, between two choices, two ways of thinking, two ways of believing, or two ways of being. When you give, don't give like them, but give like this. When you pray, don't pray like them, but pray like this. When you fast, don't fast like them, but fast like this etc., etc. Over and over, Jesus is drawing the contrast between how those who are truly seeking God from their hearts are to be rewarded by him for their deeds and how they are to comport themselves as compared to the hypocrites 
the actors, the phonies, if you will. Those whose hearts are not truly seeking after God, but are merely performing virtue signaling, we call that today, for other men so that they may think that they are something that in their hearts they're actually not. In our lesson today, he, Jesus that is, is doing the same thing when it comes to speaking about our allegiance to him versus our allegiance to wealth and or idols or possessions. Make no mistake, Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, is talking about your allegiance, your fidelity to God versus everything and everyone else. I know today we don't like absolutes. Today we don't like up and down and right and wrong. We don't like contrast between two things. We think things are fluid. But that's not how the Bible presents it. it choose ye this day whom you will serve. God or man. That's what the Bible, excuse me, that's what the Bible says. Amen? Amen. I see y'all looking at me already, and that's okay. Looking at me like, Pastor, I love Jesus. And I love Jesus above and beyond everything else. I don't have any idols in my life. You're definitely not talking to me. Okay. But do we actually understand the biblical and spiritual definition of an idol? I'm not talking about American Idol now. I'm talking about the real and true definition of what an idol is, according to Scripture. Remember in our text, Jesus is not talking to strangers. He is talking to the chosen people of God, who have the law and the prophets and the writings and the teachings about God and what God expected of them. It's these people to whom Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. You will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Matthew 6, 24. Clearly Jesus had a reason to make this point to them, and it's still apropos today. The King James Version translates the last part of that verse, not money, but it uses a word known as mammon. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon, believe it or not, is an Aramaic term for wealth, property, or anything of value. Mammon was also, hear this, the Syrian god of riches. Thus, the idea here is that you cannot serve both God and the idol of wealth, the god of wealth, the god of this age, the god of earthly things, the god of natural things things. If you understand the Greco-Roman world, they had a God for everything. A God for prosperity, a God for wine, a God for the harvest, a God for fertility. They had God for everything. But Jesus is saying you cannot serve God and mammon. Wealth is a better translation of, than the word money. The Greek words that specifically mean money were other words that could have, Jesus could have used instead of the word mammon. But in contrast, mammon refers to total wealth, which would include money, property, and possessions. Any or all things to which people serve instead of God. And this, beloved, is what the Bible and spiritual definition of an idol is. Any person or thing that consumes your thoughts, your words, your time, your energy, or your money, other than God, is an idol. This is why we fast. To shake ourselves loose from the thoughts, the words, the time, the energy, or anything else that gets in the way of God speaking to and through us. Some people may say that as long as they don't want something too much more than God, then the love of earthly possessions is okay. But that's not what Jesus in Matthew 6, 24 is saying. He said, no one can serve two masters, for you will either hate and love one and be devoted or despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to mammon or by mammon. Now, I know we don't like that word hate. We don't like that word despise. Those are strong words. They, they create a visceral reaction in us, don't they? 
And the Lord knows we don't like to be singled out, especially when we think we're doing the right thing and or what we thought we should do, but someone's telling us what we're doing is called into question. But beloved, we must understand the gravity of this single scripture from Matthew 6, 24, for it is speaking to the heart of the human condition and how we truly and genuinely serve and know God from our hearts or not. It's no small thing. This is the same as what God was speaking about in the very first commandment. Here's that quiz again. What's the first commandment, everyone? I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. No one can serve two masters. You will hate and love one, and you will be devoted to one and despise the other. The Hebrew often translates beside me or before me, meaning in my presence. The point is that nothing else can qualify as God in your life. The true God is not only number one, but he must be the only one. Other gods, beloved, could also constitute people, places, or things we place higher than God in our lives. The Bible defines these clearly as idols, and they can be anything, money, possessions, food, working out, people, relationships, your, your husband, your wife, your children, anything or anyone we place above God is another God. Mighty tight in this church today. We are God's people, beloved. We are set apart to live according to his ways, which is why Jesus was making this contrast in Matthew 6, to do it this way and not that way, like I said earlier. But know this, beloved, his ways are not our ways. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are greater than our thoughts. For our tendency as humans, our proclivity as a human is to crave the, is to, is to, is to crave earthly and fleshly things and to fall prey to be enslaved by things that are natural. To seek only pleasure and comfort and happiness. We need we refine in these material things. And when we do this, in, when we do this in this way, we are seeking earthly things. We are seeking the creature rather than the creator. Instead of seeking God, the creator, with our whole hearts, who made these very idols that we think are so very important. But praise be to God, beloved, for God is faithful. He does bless us with these things in life because we know, he knows we have need of men, of money. Amen? Amen. Amen. But these things should not take the place of the real relationship with God. Our marriages, our children, our best friend, our jobs, our houses, our habits, our Facebook profile, Instagram, TikTok, or whatever hobby you have must take a back seat to the one who not only numbers your days, but actually holds your life in the hollow of his hand. Beloved, don't be fooled by what this world offers you. For all that is in the world is the craving of physical desire, a craving for everything that we see, the deceitful pride of life and our achievements, achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father God, but are from this world, 1 John 2, 16. Beloved, we cannot serve two masters. We cannot serve two lords, so to speak. We will either love and be devoted to one, and hate and despise the other. It's such a subtle thing, beloved. And this is how the enemy of your soul works. Because the best way to understand is to use, understand this word hate, beloved, is in the context of ignoring or not giving proper attention to. If you don't pay proper attention to your health, if you despise your health, if you hate your health, right? You ignore the warning signs your body gives you that something is not quite right with your knee, and you will experience a major failure sometime down the road because you ignored the warning signs. This is also true spiritually. When the natural things of this world have your attention so much, your wife, your children, your job, or whatever it is, you're so focused on that you will miss the spiritual warning signs that you're not quite close to God like you should be. Amen. Amen. 
And you don't pay attention to your relationship with your spouse or your children because you're more focused on your job or some other pursuit or some other relationship, typically your relationship with your family suffers. We understand that naturally, don't we? Mm -hmm. This is what we do in our relationship with God through Jesus Christ, beloved. But we forget that he rewards the heart of those who love him. Those who put him third. Ooh, did I say that? First. Those who put him fifth. First. Those who put him tenth. First. Those who put him first. Amen. Amen? Amen. Look at how Jesus shows us when he demonstrates. Look at how Jesus shows us this, how, how we demonstrate our love for him in John 14, 15. He says, if you love me, it's Jesus speaking, obey my commandments. That's pretty simple, isn't it? If you really love and care for me, like you said, if you really serve me, like you said, if you're really walking in my light, like you said, if you really feel with my spirit, like you said, like the cross on your chest and the Bible you carry and the, and the scriptures you face with your friends, if you really love me, obey my commandments. Whose commandments? Uh, His, right? Do you see love? Do you see the love of Jesus today in the church? Do you see the love of Jesus in the world? Why not? If you love me, that's all right, answer back. That's good, I like that. If you love me, keep my commandments. Do you love Jesus today? Yes. yes. I said, do you love Jesus today? Amen. Yes. Then obey his commandments. Amen. 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 Hear me. Some believe that they are in Christ and have favor with God, but they cherry pick what things God through Christ has said in the scripture that they will believe and or follow. Mm, I'm quiet in here. Some say that they're Christians, but they cherry pick what this Bible says that they're going to believe or not. Oh, pastor, I believe that, but that over there, I'm not so sure. You say things like, the God that I know loves everybody. Or God knows my heart. That's my favorite one. God knows my heart. And I don't believe that it really has to be the way the scripture is saying in that passage. Or, pastor, you're just interpreting that passage of scripture really narrowly. God didn't understand the nuance of the 21st century. He didn't understand gender fluidity or body dysmorphia or the fact that some people are just born that way. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. <clears throat> Hebrews 13, 8. The Bible says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Malachi 3, 6. Psalms 95 says, For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. So the God who created the world and all it contains, who said that the cow on a thousand hills belongs to him, the great Alpha and Omega, the one who, the one who has no beginning and no end, the one who formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into our nostrils a breath of life, and we became a living spirit, didn't know that one day the unrepentant heart of man would lead us to a place we find today in our society and humanity? He didn't know? He did. This is what you would rather believe to believe the truth of the gospel. Nay, beloved, I choose to believe God through Christ. Hebrews 1 says it like this. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to the ancestors through the prophets. And now, in these final days, that's the days we live in, he has spoken to us through his son. God promised everything to the son as an inheritance. And through the son, he created the universe. The sun radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. 
when he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. This shows that the Son is far greater than the angels, just as the name God gave him is greater than their names, which is why we pray in Jesus' name and no other. Beloved, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve anything or anyone other than God and believe that God is pleased with this and will reward you for this. He rewards the hearts of those who love him by loving his son and accepting his work on Calvary. Amen? Amen. This is what Jesus is saying to us plainly in John 14, beginning at verse 15. If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. Listen closely. What advocate are you speaking of, Jesus? Well, let me tell you. He is, verse 17, the Holy Spirit, who leads into all truth. Where does the Holy Spirit lead us? Into all truth. Where does the Holy Spirit lead us? Into truth. Into truth. The world, hear this people, God, the world cannot receive him. Receive who? The Holy Spirit. Because it isn't looking for him, and it doesn't recognize him. But you, people of God, but you on Facebook and social media, you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. This is what Jesus was saying to his disciples before he went to Calvary. Listen to what he is saying here. He is the Holy Spirit who leads us all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now, Jesus, in person, in the flesh, and later will be in you. Over and over and over, Jesus is telling them that he and the Father are one, and this passage is telling us that when he returned to the Father, meaning having completed the purpose for which he came in the flesh to die on the cross for you and for me and for mankind for past, present, and future, and had made offer the perfect sacrifice for sin, he would return to heaven and sit down at the right hand of the Father on high. He would reward us by returning to us, hear this, through his Holy Spirit, so as to bring the Father and the Son into the hearts of the believer and abide with us always. He told them that, he, that they would know him. Why? Because just as the Father and Son are God, so is his Spirit. So they were going to recognize his Spirit when he came to live in them because he was the same Spirit walking with them now in the personage of Christ. This is why and what Jesus meant when he says in verse, 13, verse 18 of John 14, No, I will not leave you as orphans. No, I will not abandon you, my disciples. Soon I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me in the, per in the flesh, he's speaking of. But you will see me since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. What an awesome promise God made us through Christ. He is actually promising to come and make his home, his abode, his, his, he's coming to rest, rule, abide, to reside in the hearts of all of us who believe in him and accept his gift of salvation purchased by the innocent blood of Christ. But remember, beloved, only those of us whose allegiance is for him and not divided with other people, places, and pursuits. God gives us these things as a blessing in life, but they should not take the place of God who is the source of our no one can serve two masters. You will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God 
and the enslaved to mammon. He rewards the hearts of those who believe in him through loving and trusting in his son. Which will you choose today? This is what Jesus said in verse 21. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. Who loves Jesus? Jesus said, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. Not the ones who will say on that great day of judgment, Lord, Lord, did we not, did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not work mighty members in your name? Did we not do great works? And he will say what? Depart from me before I never what? I never knew you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me, he said. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Matthew 14, 21. Beloved, choose this day whom you will serve. For God rewards the heart of those who love him by loving and trusting in Jesus Christ, those who are trusting him from their hearts. For I tell you truly, when the Son of Man comes in all his glory, will we find faith in the earth. Amen. 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 you've given us, but most of all, we thank you for Christ and his sacrifice on Calvary. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Father, these gifts that I hold in my hand pale in comparison to what you gave us in Christ. But in obedience to your word, we have given these gifts cheerfully. And we know, Lord, that you love a cheerful giver. So, Father, I pray that you would breathe on this gift, 
that it would be used for the furtherance of the gospel in this community. Beyond these four walls, beyond Attleboro, Father, may it go around the world in helping the gospel of Jesus Christ to be preached so that all men may come to a saving knowledge of you. That is the purpose for which you planted the church 2,023 plus years ago. That is the work of the church. And we are gladly your co-laborers in that work today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you ask or think, according to the power that works in us, unto him alone, be glory in all the churches by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. 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 Now, saints, please stand with me as we conclude our service this morning, where they will know we are Christians by our love. fast of his love today and for all eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you on social media. Have a great, wonderful day. Happy Palm Sunday.